What's up everybody, it's your boy Jobbers and Goons and today because yesterday's video actually did surprisingly well, I didn't expect y'all to enjoy it as much, it was um, you know just 10 Jobbers we hate in fiction and my boy Chuck was on it and it did super well so we're just going to come back with the flip side that I mentioned in that video which is 10 major goons in fiction that me and Chuck personally love and of course coming back for the back to back is my boy Chuck. If you want to say what up, hey, what up, fellas? Uh, I hope uh, all of you guys are doing fine. Uh, this video, you know, uh, jobbers and goons was like, hey, dude, like this one popped. Dude, we should do another one, you know, but uh, have it, you know, slightly different. I'm like, yeah, you know. So uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead, go ahead and get into it. Yeah, and if y'all like this, smash the like button. Let's run it up like 500. Um, We'll maybe come back for either the Jobber one, part two, or if y'all like this one more, Goon part two. But anyways, like he said, we're just going to talk about, you know, goons that we love throughout fiction. I'm going to tell you real quick what a goon is. A goon, to qualify, basically, they handle their business in the streets. You know when they pop up in the story, shit's going down, and they're going to handle their business. So... That's why, uh, and if you haven't seen any Goon videos, of course, go check out the Goon series. But, um, yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and give my first Goon, and then Chuck will give his after me, and we'll keep going with that, similar to the last video. I hope you guys enjoy this, and let's begin. So, my first Goon I got to talk about, I got to rep the boy, Shin from Kingdom. Now, Chuck hasn't read Kingdom. Most of you sacrilegious hoes watching this video have not read Kingdom either. And I forgive you for it, but you definitely need to read that shit. Free link in my Discord. But anyway, this is probably the biggest goon manga I've ever read in my life. Arguably the biggest goon material I've ever read, period. And Shin is with it. Starts off a war orphan. His homie gets murked on the block, and they both wanted to be great generals one day. So he's like, yo, you gotta leave, live the dream for both of us. Shin's like, bet. Spins the block on everybody throughout the story to get his wrap up and eventually become general for him and his boy we see him right like just he starts off with a couple people in his unit and he try he has to eventually try to make it to like ten thousand in his unit and he's got to swing on everybody because the streets are crazy so he's one of the craziest main characters ever super dope and i had to shout him out as my first goon because i shin's sliding on anybody regardless and he definitely he definitely needs more love and with that being said, Chuck, who's your first goon? Uh, definitely Thanos, uh, one of my favorite characters. Uh, he goes in like um, I, I remember, like when I was first reading his stuff, and uh, like yo, he just like beats the hell out of Thor, beats the hell out of Silver Surfer, beats the hell out of Hulk, and all that shit. And I'm like, yo, this guy goes in, you know. And um, I like I like like I like his planning, how he is able to. Just reach these high levels of power just by either just you know working his ass off for it, or he just like I don't know plans it out, you know. Um, and like uh, I think uh, he's won like so many times, but he always like fucks up at the end. I don't know why he does that. He kind of jobs too, but uh, I think he's. Uh, <laughs> hey, I think he does you know. Yeah, no, but, but to clarify, you can be a jobber and a goon. Perfect example, Wolverine. So it's perfectly fine if that's the case for you, for that to be a goon. Yeah, Thanos, like, literally no one likes him in his verse. Um, like, even the bitch he's trying to smash for half his storyline doesn't like him. Uh, so he was losing his hoe to Deadpool. So definitely jobs. But uh, he's still a menace, and, like, every time he shows up, especially in the classic era... Like, he was going to do some dickhead shit. So, definitely a menace. Um, I think for my next one, this is an obvious one for me. My boy R2-D2. So, I had to shout him out because... And W's in the live chat if you did watch the R2 goon video. But for whatever reason, not many people tuned in for that shit. And it's a glorious video. And he has way more moments. But R2-D2 is this little astromech droid from the Star Wars verse. Uh, that 
accompanies several characters throughout the storyline, including Luke Skywalker. That becomes like basically his homeboy. Uh, and of course, C-3PO is always with him, and he holds the team back, but R2 spins the block regardless. Has, I think, over 100,000 plus kills in the Clone Wars as a fucking astromech droid? Yeah. That helps, like, guide a ship? That's all he's supposed to do? We've seen him com commit literal war crimes on screen while doing <laughs> his robot giggle. Like, R2 is one of the greatest and happiest things I've ever read and watched because he's a menace the dude got yoda to swing on him like who yoda's when have you ever seen yoda angry it took the literal genocide of all the jedi for him to go swing on palpatine like bro he got yoda to snap that he's a beast like r2 is a goon and i think one of the best ways to capture how savage he is is when in the last movie spoilers but not many people liked it anyway um c-3po was basically going to do something that was gonna erase potentially erase his memories and C -3PO. yeah so what happened was they're like yo we can have it backed up and he's like how and they're like to r2 and he, r2 was just staring out of his c-3po was like yeah <laughs> i don't know if i trust him r2's a dick and r2 didn't really say <laughs> nothing so yeah, that was a fun, like, he is, he's a menace, so, definitely had to shout out R2, uh, for Star Wars, but, uh, who you got next, Chuck? I think I got, uh, Darth Vader, uh, definitely another one of my favorites, um, I think that uh, he's, like, a really tragic character, like, you know, he came up from, you know, nothing, he was in the hood, uh, you know, just fucking, fucking slave. I mean, li li literal slavery, literal yeah. slavery, um, you know, had to work with it this way up. Uh, people were doubting him, and then he's like, I'm the chosen one and shit. And then, like, you know, he did a lot of goon shit in the Clone Wars. He beat the fuck up out of Grievous and shit. I mean, not Grievous, fuck him. He never met him. But, uh, Dooku, you know, he was fucking on him, you know. Like, he was getting better over time, and then, like, uh... Killed all yeah, those kids? Like, yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, and then Put the yeah. young boy on a t-shirt, yeah, t-shirt gang. Uh, that's, not, that's not really a good moment, but I mean, yeah, he definitely is. Kids. Those kids didn't work to do shit. <laughs> but he yo, but but he did go in when he was Jedi hunting for sure, and he is one of the strongest Sith for sure. Um, and full potential, he would have been a monster. So I mean, he he just has a lot of it too. I mean, like, there's also like like all like, oh, like only Nihilus and Revan. Have about as much strip as he does, but like, you, you, you just can't beat that classic look, man. I mean, that, that, that German helmet thing. I can't think of a more iconic movie villain than Darth Vader. Like, he's he's the fucking man. But the, um, another good moment, obviously, you didn't mention for him. I got to shout it out because Vader, Vader fans will be at our next if you don't mention it. The time when he got cornered by the army and told them all I'm surrounded by his fear and dead and, men. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> What That's amazing. Dick. Yeah, nah. Uh, Darth Vader is one of the goats. Like he's one of the most menacing characters ever. Uh, next is one I think will surprise people. I gotta shout out my boy Lockjaw from Marvel Comics. So if y'all didn't know, Lockjaw is this fucking massive bulldog-looking dog that belongs to the Inhumans, like Black Bolt, and he has powers like portal hopping and dimensional travel. Right. Also, turns out Lockjaw's fucking dangerous. So, there's been instances when he like ran up on Thanos, and I think it was like off screen fucked him up, and all you see was him like chewing on Thanos' boot. There's been times where like all the X Men and in Inhumans got depowered or some shit. And keep in mind, there's kids involved, right? We're at the X Men Academy, and Lockjaw ran up on them kids and was about to eat them. Like, Cyclops was like, holy shit, that dog's gonna kill kids. Because they were messing with gang. Like, Lockjaw rides for his people regardless. One of the most loyal characters and, like, not talked about in comics. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's like a, like, Chewbacca in a way. Like, you know, he's just gonna, he's sliding for the homies. So, and the fact that he's the plug, like, Lockjaw's plugging everybody out with portals. Like, that, it's hilarious. So, yeah, shout out to my boy Lockjaw. Um, and he, he earned his spot on, uh this list who who's next for you chuck 
Um, probably Iron Man. Um, even though he's like a normal human. I mean, well, he was a normal human, but then like he just got enhanced and shit. But you know, generally he's like a human, right? You get what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like he's still able to like just fight with gods and demons and shit and aliens. Like, they, like his suits keep getting better and better. Like, like I don't know how the fuck he does it, dude. Like that celestial buster thing like that like that shit's nasty and then that hulkbuster that new one that came out like like stark stark just goes in the phoenix buster that fucking split that shit i don't know how the fuck you do that how do you make something that does that that's just crazy and then uh when he made that celestial suit and like one of the what ifs or something like how the fuck do you do that bro how, how do you literally make armor out of something that's like higher dimensional than yourself that's like out of it should logically be outside of your presence and shit, but you're like, no, I'm gonna make an armor out of it anyways. You know, nah, that's like, ridiculous. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how the fuck he does it, but yeah, uh, I think. He's, oh, and he and he's also literally made a Doctor Strange suit, uh, as well in the comics. So like, yeah, like he's just really nasty. Um, I do want to make a video on him down the line for sure because I think that people really downplay him. Uh, because like. Deadass, he's he's like rivaled like heralds and uh, sky fathers and shit. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, nah, I agree. I mean, Iron Man's one of the more like slapped on characters in comics in terms of what he actually can do in combat, not just with prep, yeah. but like actually just fighting you. Uh, and yeah, he he is uh, a goon. I remember uh, there was one version of him uh, where he. He, he made technology to make everyone pretty and then charged the shit out of it to everybody. Oh, my God. Extremist, like, right? Yeah, he drove everybody broke, bro. That shit was funny. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, yeah no, nah, he, he definitely is a goon. Um, for me, next, this one's someone a lot of people might not know, but it comes from one of the best comics ever, uh, Miracle Man. But the goon I'm going to be talking about is Kid Miracle Man. So here's the situation. When Kid Miracle Man, Miracle Man, and Boy Miracle Man, or Miracle Boy, some shit like that, they had really basic names, they were all fighting these, like, dragons one day, right? Or what they called dragons, because a couple of them were really young. He's and, nuts. Yeah, uh, that was a really good setup, actually. <laughs> but they, um, <laughs> yeah, he does, Kid Miracle Man does drag his nuts later, you'll see. But they, um, so they were, like, fighting these beings, and it got so bad that, like, um, Miracle Man got concussed, bad as shit, dropped out, was gone. Kid, uh, Miracle Boy died. And then they said Kid Miracle Man grew up and became the dragon. And so what happened was he stayed in his superhero state so long that he developed like a god complex. Where he's like, no, I'm god. Like, look, I saved us from everything. They couldn't save you all this shit. He's basically god. So, whenever he's in that Kid Miracle Man form, he's that guy. Like, that wannabe god. And, bro, the shit he, like, he shows up the fade Miracle Man. He's like, you didn't come back and save us, you bitch. Miracle Man's like, dude, like, that shit was, like, 20 years ago. Like, relax, we were kids. And he was like, how, he was like, transform right now so I could beat your ass. And Miracle Man's like, dude, I'm not gonna fight you. And so, Kid Miracle Man grabs his fucking wife by the neck and is like, how about if I kill this bitch? Will you fight then? And all you see is like a tear go down Miracle Man's face, and he says the tra uh, the word to transform, and they start fucking brawling. The next time he transforms, he's in like a mental hospital, and he blows up the nurse. But before he blows her up, he's like, "You're really sweet to me. I hope nothing bad ever happens to you." And he's like, "Just kidding, bitch!" Blows her up <laughs> just by touching her too. It's crazy. And then he goes on to massacre. I think it was it was London, maybe. Literally, the whole city was putting, like, kids on stakes and shit. It was crazy. Just to get Miracle Man to beef with him, he was genociding whole city. So, yeah. Kid Miracle Man's an absolute fucking nutcase. And if y'all haven't read the Miracle Man comics, the old ones, the originals, uh, definitely go check them out. But, yeah. Uh, who, who's next, Chuck? Who we got? I think SCP-682. So, SCP, it is, like, uh, this foundation. They're kind of, like... Area 51, but like worldwide, they like contain and protect and shit and secure like these anomalies and shit. And like 682 is like one of the strongest ones. Like, I mean, like apart from acid, like it's pretty much unstoppable. Like, you can't really kill it. Like, it's literally been like teleported to another dimension. 
like melted down, cut apart, literally like like reality warped, like they've sent it to non existence, they've tried to insert it into itself so it would cease to exist or something. It doesn't die, like it just doesn't die. Uh, and I think it's a goon because like I don't know, it's kinda like Doomsday on steroids, I think. I think it's kind of like Doomsday and Gerard Valkyrie from Bleach. Like, that fool doesn't die either. Um, and, uh... But yeah, he has a lot of goon moments. Just look up the experiment log for how, how many times they try to kill it. And it's like, nah, this, it just doesn't work. And, um... People... Some people, like, try to, like, really downplay the character. Like, not in terms of, like, the power, but just in terms of, like how good of a character it is because like i mean at first you'll be like it's a mary sue and it is but like what once you look into the lore you're like it's actually kind of deep because um it's it's actually it actually represents like um like humanity in a way or something i i, I forgot I, for, I forgot what the narrative was in some, some some of the tales but it's like uh if humanity exists then it'll exist too or something and it is like the universe in, in a way or something. Some, I, I like I I, I, I forgot what what, what like what, like the tale said, but like something like that. You know, I just cut that shit out. But um, it sounds like he was a good man. It, but nah, let us yeah, know in the comment yeah. section what the exact narrative of uh, six eight two was. I think you're right though. I think it was like some yeah. weird tie to the universe where uh, as long as yeah. it's like in a, based on an existence of another thing kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, an like effect. That. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the 682 effect or whatnot. Bars. But anyways, yeah. next for me, this will be my last one. This is the Dog Lobo from DC Comics. Have to shout him out. Uh, one of my favorite characters of all time, Lobo, is from Zarnia. Um, and what happened was, he grew as soon as he popped out the womb, he was evil as fuck. And he beat the shit out of his doctor. I think he killed his doctor. Killed his mama. Killed everybody in there. Uh, and by like age 10 or some shit, he had killed his planet. Like he fuck it, he wanted to be unique. So he got rid of his old race. Um, and after that, he was cashing checks and breaking necks. He was actually initially made to um, be like a ripoff of Wolverine and make fun of Wolverine. And he ended up being better than Wolverine. And even Stan Lee was like, no, Lobo's fucking hilarious. Uh, like he, he's always hanging out with space dolphins. Um, he put his, his cigar out on Darkseid's forehead. He shot up the fifth dimension. Like, uh, all this crazy shit Lobo does for shits and giggles and for the bag. He's one of the most epic characters in DC history and comics history in general. So I had to give my boy the last spot in the first video. With that in mind, yeah. we got one more for Chuckster. Uh, Ukiora from Bleach. Um, uh, pretty much yeah. the strongest Espada, honestly, like... I think he went in because, like, he was just fucking on Ichigo. Ichigo had to train his ass off and, like, get his ass beat to get strong enough to fight him. And even after he got strong enough to fight Grimjow and beat him, he was Ichigo was like, oh, yeah, dude, like, I got this in the bag, bro. Like, it's all good. I can beat all the Espada. And Ukiora is like, nah, and he just fucks on him in his first form. I mean, and then he transforms, and then he's like... Oh, I have another form. <laughs> and he, like, it, it, I don't know, like, I just thought that was really cool. Uh, I mean, it took literal Vasto Lorde to kill him, so... And even then, he actually kind of competed against it, so... You know, that's really impressive, and uh, even though... Stark is number one in the ranking, like... It's actually more like, more like Ukiora is stronger because he doesn't have a number. And he has a second release, so I'm just saying... Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he he's, pretty he's immeasurable. Uh, yeah, but, for sure. Yeah, facts, but big facts. Multiversal. Mm -hmm. uh, outer. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Um, again, you're going to be seeing a lot more of me and Chuck uh, collabing and hanging out in general on multiple channels throughout the multiverse. So definitely keep that in mind. Check out all the links in the video description. If you haven't subscribed to Chuck yet, definitely go check out his channel make super dope content he's got some awesome projects coming up real soon so uh definitely prepare for that plus he just dropped a banger uh bleach versus video so definitely go check that out but anyways yeah, guys thanks, fellas. yeah uh anything you got to say or are you good uh we good uh thanks for watching guys 
yeah, thank y'all. Um, and again, hit the like button if you haven't already, and we'll do a part two to this. Uh, this has been your boy Jobbers and Goons, and I'll see y'all later.